Hi hey guys, it's Unders. We are looking at Isotope's new plugin RX7. And what I've done here is I've just got a small chunk of a speech that was uh, quite badly recorded. And I'm just gonna show you a couple of the great features inside it that we can use to make that piece of audio much more usable. So anyone doing like wedding photography and footage or filming events, it's gonna be really helpful for you. So let's have a look at that. Okay, so here we are inside RX7 from Isotope. And what I've got here, as I explained, is a piece of audio. It's from a speech. It was unfortunately, it was pretty badly recorded. It was too near the audience. The audience were really loud. It was too far away from the speaker. And then um, what we're gonna do is just have a quick look at some really quick things we can do to fix this and make it a bit more appropriate. So just for an example of uh, what we're listening to. I'll just play a small section here and you can see we've got some automation occurring right at the start. I'll explain what that is in just a moment. So as you can hear, by no means perfect. And really it'd be quite difficult to use this in the video it was intended for. So we're just gonna go over a couple of things we can do to bring it up to a bit more of an acceptable standard. And the first thing you can see is I've got these bits of automation going on. Now what they are are just some gain controls. And if we look down here at the bottom, we've got this instant process and I've got attenuate set on here. And what that lets me do is it lets me click in areas here and to create these quick automation lanes. So where I've got a, a piece of audio that's particularly loud. So if we were to come up here, for example, we can just click on the top and it'll snap our marker. Um, I'm assuming this will be another like cheer from the crowd, something like that. <laughs> and as you can see, it's considerably louder up to like 30 decibel louder than the speaker we can just real quickly just pop some points either side of this and if we just get a point nicely in the middle we can just drag that down and we can sort of in real time there just bring it down to a more sort of acceptable state now another way you could do this would be to put a compressor over the project and that's generally a way I'll work or um, if we've got this sort of issue I'll compress the whole thing first and just take the dynamics right down and then lift it up but we've only got this short piece here that we're looking at so we can just bring down some of those key areas there so it's a little bit more in our control see if you had a really long speech which this is actually from like a, a 40 minute section I'd compress it first rather than uh, creating all these points. Although doing it this way does give you a much nicer element of control. So that's got everything more within a, a scope of control that's acceptable and that we need. Now, when we listen to this, one of the first things that's evident, there's quite a bit of noise in the background. Um, you know, we've ended up recording this quite, a, quite to the noise floor. We've not made use really of all of our main dynamic range. We're only going up to, what's it really, using about minus 23. So there's a good 18, 20 decibels there that we could have used to keep away from that noise floor. But unfortunately, we've got a lot of noise in the background. So if I play, just focus on how noisy it is. Yeah, so there's sort of some pink noise just constantly rolling in the background. So over here on the right hand side, we've got voice denoise. And we're just going to do some settings for that and test it and use it and try and clear that noise away. So adaptive's really good for this sort of thing where it uh, becomes quite dynamic and the main source of audio focuses away because we've got a crowd and the speaker. So we can leave that on adaptive. That works best for us. If you've got just one... A single point of generation of audio so it's just a speaker and there was no other external sound and um, learning it can work better for you but adaptive suits us here 
Obviously, this is running in a dialogue, which is going to be best for us. Um, threshold and reduction, we don't really know yet. So what we can do is use compare just at the bottom here. And what compare does gives us this little window here. And as you can see, it's just that uh, processing what we've currently got and we can then just preview the original against this denoise version based on our current settings. Something about my scene appeals to Katie. Admittedly, with Katie being a highly specialised clinical psychologist, and there's a vast difference there. You can hear it straight away, and you can see how much has been removed in the audio. Now we could tweak that by changing the threshold and amount of reduction. So if we were to boost the reduction up here and we hit compare again, we see it now processes again. It remembers our first settings and then we've got settings two as well. So we can A and B those before we choose which ones to commit to. So this is with far more extreme reduction. That's baby a bit much. So the first set of settings we got are the best of the two here. You could tweak this and um, really delve into what's going to be best for you. In this case, this is what we're going with. Now we're going to render this. And notice that rendering that's committed our automation from before as well. But we've now got a better piece of audio. There's certainly some more clarity to it. That's done a really good job for us. Now, there's some very minor clipping uh, happening on even the parts that we've reduced because when we recorded, or when they were recorded, should I say, um, some clipping obviously occurred. <laughs> it's very, very minor. Um, but it would be nice to remove that as well. So let's just snap back to here and we can use the declip here. Uh, this is can, this can be super, super minor here. We can just capture it right up in this section here. I think probably as much as that, if we compare these. That was very loud. <laughs> it's very minor, but that's helped us out a little bit there. So we'll render that to place as well. Now, obviously it's still very quiet. We could normalize it or we could just use the gain to bring the overall level up. And I think that's what we'll do. So if we go to the options menu right at the top here and we choose gain, we've got a couple of different gaining options. We're just gonna choose gain. And I think we could add maybe as much as 10 dB and still be pretty safe in our dynamics. Let's try it and see rather than comparing this time. Now, it may appear like we've overshot a little bit, but we are actually zoomed in quite a bit here. So when we dial it back, it seems fine. That was very loud. Seeing as we all are gathered here today, there has been a national wedding in London. There must have been something about my scene that appealed to Katie. Admittedly, with Katie being a highly specialised clinical psychologist. So we've already got a much clearer piece of audio, a much more acceptable level. There are some things we can do to take it uh, even further. So we could use EQ, for example, to bring out those key areas. Or we could even introduce uh, plugins and add a bit of compression to it as well. So it's continuously timed that way. But I just want to show you a really quick and easy way we can take some dialogue that was by means no, not ideal at all, but make it far more usable. Did it care to me in the past that perhaps they're interested in Matthew? Now there's quite a lot of reverb in the room, so perhaps let's try the D reverb as well. It's probably best if we learn the settings for this. So we just click learn and let it run. And as you can see here, it's 
processing the audio. Fab. So it's learned our audio, giving us our best settings. If we hit compare like we did before, it's just going to take a moment to process this again for us as well. So let's see what we've got here. Let's preview the original. With Katie being a highly specialized and then de-reverbed. Did it care to meet the past that perhaps they're interested in Matthew could be purely sound? Yeah, it's like it's a bit of a long-term psychological study. Or maybe just that's done a bit of an extreme job there. So let's take the reduction down considerably because it has helped us out and we're going to enhance the dry signal as well and we're going to compare that so what we've done here we've dialed back the amount of reverb reduction it's doing and we're going to enhance the sort of original dry so there's still going to be some balance in there so that was a little too artificial sounding so let's now test two with one And number two there has really taken it much further for us. I think we could boost the reduction up just a little bit more, maybe to around six here. I think that's going to be about perfect for us when we compare the three here. That was very loud. <laughs> <laughs> Now there's definitely a happy balance somewhere between two and three here, but we're going to commit to two and render that. And that has given us a much more useful piece of audio than we originally had. I'll just um, in the video just quickly do the original versus what we have here. And, uh, you know, that only took a few minutes. Hopefully it can help a lot of you guys out that are doing this sort of work. Um, and if not, reach out to me and maybe we can arrange it where I'll uh, do a little bit of work for you. That was very loud. Seeing as we all have a day you know, the hardest part to be in the natural world is what it is. There must have been something about Matthew that appealed to Katie. Admittedly, with Katie being a highly specialised clinical psychologist, did it care to me the past that perhaps her interest in Matthew could be purely sound? Well, guys, that's been a little demonstration of what RX7 can do for you. If you want to know a little bit more about it, there's a whole series of videos coming out with the individual modules, how we can use them and what they can do on the channel. So I'll link that down below. And uh, I look forward to seeing you in those videos as well. And I look forward to seeing you more on the channel. Thank you very much.